Mr. Levine, you're now recognized for five minutes for your statement. Chairman Hensterling, Ranking Member Waters, and members of the committee, my name is R.J. Lehman. I am Senior Fellow, Editor-in-Chief, and Co-Founder of the R Street Institute. R Street is a think tank based here in D.C. that seeks to promote free markets and limited effective government. Our insurance project highlights the crucial role that competitive private insurance markets play in helping society evaluate, mitigate, and manage risk. Unfortunately, despite reforms passed by this committee and ultimately signed by President Obama in 2012, NFIP premiums still do not reflect the full risk of loss. The program is not sustainable in its current form, as evidenced by its $25 billion debt, to prepare for shifting risks, to ensure that markets function properly, and to protect taxpayers from the exploding cost of disaster assistance, we believe it is essential that we begin to transition to a private risk-based insurance market for floods. Shifting flood insurance to the private sector will mean bringing powerful catastrophe models to bear to more accurately segment and price property level risks. It will mean having companies compete to fashion products that are more attractive to policyholders and that better meet their needs. Progress has already been made in the area of reinsurance. The NFIP historically relied on the Treasury whenever its losses exceeded its resources. But earlier this year, FEMA executed its first private reinsurance transaction, and we are pleased to see that the legislation would incorporate Representative Lukemeyer's proposal to require FEMA to use reinsurance to lower taxpayers' direct exposure to catastrophic loss. The legislation also makes changes to better capitalize the NFIP's reserve fund, which can be used to buy reinsurance. We support those changes, but we think reserve fund charges should be based on the risks posed by each individual property. The current assessments, which are based on a flat percentage of total premium, actually serve to magnify inequities between properties that pay subsidized rates and those that pay full risk rates. Uh, when it comes to primary flood insurance, uh, the private market currently is only about 12% of the size of the NFIP, but it is growing, and this legislation would address several concerns that have so far hindered its growth. Uh, it would remove the restriction that prohibited write your own insurers from selling standalone coverage outside of the NFIP. Uh, we are pleased also that it incorporates the Ross Castor bill to clarify that private coverage can be used to meet the mandatory purchase requirements. Uh, one area where we think it does fall a little short is in granting NFIP claims data access. Uh, zip code and census block level data isn't sufficient for insurance underwriting. Uh, property level data is essential. Uh, we understand that there are privacy concerns, but think that those can be uh, resolved through non-disclosure agreements. There has been the concern raised that a more active private market would destabilize the NFIP by allowing insurers to cherry pick low risk policies uh, until it was left a high risk pool. But the program already serves as a high-risk pool. Only a, a relatively small number of homeowners buy flood insurance. Uh, compare that with the United Kingdom, where flood insurance is sold privately, 95% of homeowners have flood insurance coverage. Uh, the vast majority of existing NFIP policyholders reside in one 100-year flood plains. That is a high-risk cohort. Uh, there are, by and large, no cherries to pick. Reducing the size of the program reduces its overall, all, overall exposure and the potential burden it can place on taxpayers. Uh, the single biggest impediment to a larger private market remains the fact that the program does not completely charge risk-based rates, both subsidized policies and, and grandfathered policies. Uh, we support moving to risk-based rates for all NFIP policies over time uh, with an understanding that lower income policyholders may need assistance. Uh, such assistance should be targeted, limited, means tested, and executed outside of the rate structure of the NFIP. And we support the draft legislation's uh, proposal to authorize states to begin crafting affordability programs. We oppose the legislation's proposal to de decrease the cap on annual rate increases, and we strongly oppose the $10,000 hard cap. Uh, while we understand that this will affect very few properties, the concern is once it is introduced as a statutory mechanism, it could be lowered by a few future Congress or even potentially by an executive order. Uh, so, and, and in addition, any premium relief we believe has to be conditioned on some form of disaster mitigation. So in closing, I'd like to reiterate our support for the broad co contours of the proposed legislation. Uh, making the transition to private flood insurance, or at least more private flood insurance, is complicated, but not nearly as complicated as continually rebuilding flood-prone flood communities. And I'd be glad to answer any questions the members might have.